So, here he is. We're both very sad that Derek is having snacks. And uh, look, we even got him equipped. So it feels just more like his real Gen Con. Mm -hmm. IRL Gen Con. Although I'm very amused that you thought Jack Lynch were the same as Slim Jims. Look, okay, I googled Slim Jims and this is what came up. Okay? Blame Amazon. Hey. No. No bellies today. What exciting stuff is happening today? There's two streams that I personally watch a lot. And I was glad we could get on. That's Vampires of Pittsburgh from Stream of Blood and Fun City. Yeah. Well, I've been listening to their Shadowrun. Um, and uh, they're not doing the Shadowrun game anymore. They're doing the sci-fi game. <laughs> Although I suppose Shadowrun's kind of sci-fi. Um, so I'll be curious to see what it's like, but they're a fun group. Okay. Here's that. There's a bunch of scheduled events and stuff like that. What did you say was gratifying? Uh, just the number of people who are, have reacted to Gen Con Online and basically said, like, hey, I was skeptical about it, but it's not the same, but it feels like a convention. It feels like a Gen Con because they're super busy and they're missing out on stuff that they wanted to see because they had to go to something else that was super awesome. So, I mean, I think we did a pretty good job of trying to take the experience online as best we could in the time that we had. I agree. I think you did a wonderful job. Mm -hmm. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> Not you. Thank you, Derek. Currently, my one issue with Gen Con Online is that I'm not getting to interact with anybody. And that's on me because of the events that I've selected. I've selected a lot of spectator events or workshops where really my only interaction is with the host. And I've turned, I've returned a couple of actual event tickets. And the other event that I'm in later today is that RPG with your cat. And today I'm just not going to be able to see other people's cats. Anyway, so what I'm going to do instead is a couple of options. And I think you guys might find this helpful for actual online Gen Con if this happens again. Um, is, well, so other, other tickets I have for today is... Um, the burlesque tonight and I think that's gonna be really fun um wow so I really have no other events today great um yeah burlesque is the only one okay so what else I'm doing Gen Con has a bomb screaming uh, st screaming <laughs> screaming schedule I think I need that streaming set schedule for the day um I'll show you in a sec and then on top of that I think it's time to investigate the Discord and see if anybody wants to play a pickup game with me of Shipwreck Arcana. And that is the game that I hope I've played with you guys at Gen Con before. Um, and it's one of my favorite games. It's on Tabletopia. I should be able to set it up and, and run it for some people. And I think that would just be really, really fun. So. That's one way to see if I can make some friends and distract myself and it's not an aggressive, scary environment. So let me, let me figure out what to do next and show you the, the streaming schedule actually. Okay, so the Gen Con streaming schedule uh, is actually best viewed over on this page rather than on the Twitch page because Twitch populates the schedule really weird. But let me zoom in. Uh, we care currently about the Gen Con TV channel, but it's Saturday. So here's what we've got. We have uh, a D&D a &D stream or, or something like that um, with just a full Asian cast, which I think is going to be really fun and incredible to watch. Then we have uh, Vampires of Pittsburgh, one of the cast members, and that is Ashley Birch, who's just so cool. She's Tiny Tina from Borderlands, amongst many other really great roles. And then we have Fun City Live Play, and David Rugnetta is on that one, and he's just a wonderful, um, very cool human. So uh, there's three live streams happening um, on that channel that are going to be so cool today. So. So we're gonna do. We're gonna play some board games. We're gonna play. Uh, we're gonna watch some live streams, and we're gonna edit some videos and um, distract ourselves from real life. Yay! Okay, I'm finally exporting yesterday's video, which, if you have already watched, it you know is difficult. 
to edit. Um, so I'm glad it is exporting and that it'll be up shortly and I can kind of stop thinking about it for a second. Um, yeah. Tired, it's now 2 p.m. And I feel like I haven't done anything at Gen Con yet, which I know is fine, but I want to do stuff at Gen Con. I want to get distracted a little more. So let's see what is going on. So it looks like there's a bunch of different things happening. Let's turn up the volume. Crazy, crazy. And especially now so when it looks like the world's gone pop the turkey. Like, is that just because you you have one so of those mindsets like, where um, you need to be working on something all the time? Or looks like Rob just, 12 just is on the make. BGG uh, channel. Uh, it's not good for my blood pressure, but uh, it's, uh, I, I just have so, enough uh, OCD to keep me going. Uh, so on the work on Twitch. Every day, so he created a Shadow of the Demon but, Lord. Uh, yeah, I also don't. I'm an RPG a, that's kind of, of ready and in this business is that it dirty. You feel like you're walking on a uh, on a precipice of failure, and so keeping active and keeping uh, a steady stream of new and entertaining content out for the audience, it, it, it hopefully will keep will maintain my relevance in the field. So I think you always do. Just, we'll see. We'll see. <laughs> Rob, thank you so much for finally coming huh, I guess on the show. I cut oh, the very yeah, end of it. Yeah, that's so funny. And okay, and then we breaks down. Um, had been it's talking about this lip. Asian D and D stream that's happening. That sigil remains in the air, no matter how many blades pierce the sigil. Um, that's so cool. I kind of want to What are this, you doing? But I missed um, most of it. Amar, what what is Kayam doing? Um, I think you shouted bar the door. Um, Chong has just like slammed General Chen, which is, uh, I mean, that is technically a you have assaulted a commanding officer. Yep. Um, so what are you doing? Uh, I think um, he advances on uh, the general. Kaim gets closer to him, kicks. When he gets um, close enough, okay. he kicks. Um, you know, and we talked about having. It looks like fantasy. Like one thing that we want to do is make sure people have options for these generic commanders too. Because it's talking about do um, one or Star just Wars like there's going to be one on the table, mm -hmm. and you want to make sure some that you're not Star just Wars running products. like the same looking figure across from each other. So, cool. you know, I, I was like, well, I need a couple options, and the first. I'm trying to see if I can run a game of Shipwreck Arcana on Tabletopia. We just created an account. I am going to the game, and I guess I can say play online. This game's only with tabletop premium. Oh, well, that is shitty. And also to summarize, um, Kat, your numbers went back in the bag because we guessed correctly, and because, um... Well, actually, no, I think your one would have stayed out because it didn't fade. So I made a mistake there because numbers only disappear off the board once they fade off of the board and your card wouldn't have faded because it would have moved to four apart. But mm. I don't like my options. <laughs> So we played a game of, <laughs> what game did we play? Shipwreck Arcana um, on Tabletop, nope, Tabletopia, which uh, was clunky and difficult. Um, I think firstly, you know, Gen Con running a lot of games on their servers right now, I think made it just be very slow and have some errors and, and problems, but I think normally you wouldn't encounter that stuff. Um, but uh, uh, Shipwreck Arcana isn't like a regular board game where you roll a die and then you move some pieces around. There's a lot of like secret information and you have to view things in a certain way. And I don't think Tabletop Simulator was um, equipped to necessarily deal with the mechanics in the best way. In the end, we figured out a couple of ways that they had tried to do that, but they didn't make clear how to do anything, like how to draw a tile without anybody seeing it or how to look at information closer. There was like no tutorial that I could see on how to use Tabletop Simulator with this particular game, like what are the actions to, you know, play this game. 
not the instructions on how to play the game, but how do you play this game on Tabletop Simulator. In the end, we made it through. I wish that um, it had been a little smoother because I think that people got frustrated with Tabletop Simulator and thus the game, which makes me sad because the game is excellent. We won, of course we won, and it was fun and it distracted me from real life for a minute. Um, yeah, and that was good. It's uh, the best I can hope for right now. Yeah, so uh, I was just saying that uh, the Stream of Blood folks are have their Vampires of Pittsburgh game going. And this is one that I've been watching, you know, through the rest of the year. And uh, this is kind of cute because, like, there's a there's a bunch of, like, um, actors and comedians who are part of that stream. And they play every Wednesday. And uh, so what they did is they, they were kind of reaching a climax in their story throughout the normal year. On Friday at Gen Con, I think, they sold slots where you could play, viewers could sign up, and they would play in the game. And whatever they changed, the players would, the, the normal players, now have to deal with on this stream where they're back. So when, I, when we had last watched them on Wednesday, like, they were leaders of an anarch revolution, and they were riding high. And, like, I've missed a bunch of this, but now they're in a morgue opening up uh, body bags and finding the remains of the Gen Con players. Wow. Uh, and one of the, one of the, the celebrity players was just like, hey, wait, are these the Gen Con players? And they're like, yep. So it's like, it sounds like a legacy game where you have to deal with the consequences of your previous actions, but somebody yeah. else played the previous legacy yep. game of you. This is where we find out that uh, RPGs are the original legacy game. What do you like about, what is the stream called? It's Stream of Blood is the, the channel and, and on Vampires of Pittsburgh is the stream. And um, what, do you, what do you like about it? Well, A, it's Vampire. Um, and then it's got Ashley Birch, and uh, who we like a lot. Um, she's a great actress. And then Thomas Middleditch and Ross Bryant, I think, are the other two actors. Um, and they're big like comedians, improv folks. So it's basically three players who don't really have any idea about Vampire and a storyteller who does. But all three of the players are good actors and good at improv, so they tend to do ridiculous things and then adapt to it. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad you're excited about it. We should watch those two streams together actually afterwards. Sure. I'll link them in the bar, the doobly-doo. So welcome to our show! We have an amazing show for you here tonight, and I know things are wild, and I'm so glad that over a hundred of you tonight wanted to do this. I know that there are some questions we have, like four computers going right now between my wife and I. So, hey everybody, how are you doing now? Um, I'm good. Um, let me see. So we watched a little bit of the Ashley Birch stream. I think that was Vampires of Pittsburgh. I forget what the name of it is. I always do. And then we watched the burlesque show and that was great. It was excellent. That was D20 burlesque. And usually every year I am at the physical show Gen Con, I go see the Glitter Guild burlesque. And I'm not sure um, if that was a representation of what they normally have um, or not, but I really, really enjoy the host um, that runs the Glitter Guild burlesque. Um, she kind of makes the hosting portion of the show like a comedy show in itself, and she's very, very entertaining. Um, whereas with D20, it just seemed like there was a host announcing the next act, and they weren't bad at all, but it wasn't like an additional performance as such. So I tend to prefer Glitter Guild, but D20 was um, wonderful too. They great performers. It was very enjoyable to watch. And then we watched a little bit of the Mike Renetta stream, which was like a shadow runny sci-fi type adventure. And that was fun. I don't know if I actually ended up filming any footage of that. Then I cooked Derek some dinner just now, which you just saw. And uh, he's having a bad day. Um, you know, the, the whole cat thing. And it's just been a lot of work up until now. And there's just a lot of things going on. People that we know are getting sick, not with COVID-19, um, other things. And then 
uh, people that we know have gotten in accidents this week, uh, fairly serious ones. Um, so Derek's kind of just been down because just everything is bad. Um, and then Dream Call was going pretty smoothly. And then today's a couple of things came up that were just, you know, difficult to deal with. Um, every year there's usually a couple of situations that come up that are just like suck all of your energy. You have to deal with a lot of staffing and all of this sort of stuff so he's kind of having a rough evening and um, so he just wants to have <laughs> rice aroni again with some broccoli so i made him that um it's almost 10 p.m here in seattle which means it's what 1 a.m in indianapolis i will figure this out like by the end of gen con i'll figure out what is happening if i could type that would be great. So let's go see what events are still happening right now and if there's anything good. Okay, I guess there's really not much. Um, there's a werewolf game. Nope, there's nothing that's starting in 10 minutes. At 2 a.m., there's like three events. Some Portuguese event. Nope. A Starfinder event. Karuba. Another board game. Bottomless Gauntlet. I don't know what that is. Those are pretty much the only things. So, nothing for us to do. And I think the Gen Con streams are all over by now. Let's click on that and find out. Yep, channels are offline. So I guess that's it for the day. Um, I honestly couldn't tell you all of the things I did today, which probably don't seem like a lot, but I'm still grieving a lot today. So... I'm just trying to take everything really as it comes and do things. I can't plan a lot today, so I'm just trying to do things that feel good in the moment, right? And I think if I were to do Gen Con online again, if this is ever a thing that they do again, my advice is playing games that you either really, really, really like by yourself, if you don't have another person to play with, or play in games that you kind of like, but make sure you have a friend with you, um, and also do some of the panels and stuff. Um, and running games is super easy if you just wanted to run like pickup games and stuff so I'll walk you through that in a second so I think for me if I were to do this again and my usual friend group is not super interested in playing again or, or doing this event again which sucks I, I see you hiding you should be coming to play games with me I would make an effort to do Find out what streams I really care about in a day, because there's a lot. There's three channels that are streaming pretty much all the way through. Um, find out what like workshops and panels that I'm interested in, but also make sure that I have at least one or two games that are very interactive and group-based where I have to interact with another person. Um, and that could be events that I run because I, there was a pretty strong lack of cooperative games happening. Uh, so it was like one game of Castle Panic, one game of Spirit Island all, all weekend. So hopefully if they do this again, I, I would like to see more co-op games in general. But for the most part, you know, I, I could run those myself too. So just making an effort to interact with people because everybody I interacted with was really wonderful. And um, you can have the Gen Con experience. You just have to kind of step outside and kind of make it happen rather than let it wash over you. I do miss the vendor hall. I haven't really looked at the looking glass at all. Honestly, it just overwhelms me to see it. I can't, I don't want to go through a giant list of vendors like this. I, I just find that difficult. Um, here's the thing. I don't usually go to Gen Con for a specific thing, uh, you know, to the exhibitor hall specifically. I don't usually go in with a list of things that I need. Sometimes I have like one or two booths that I definitely want to check out, but usually I go in there pretty cold and I'm like, what, what is speaking to me? And it's not really possible to have that experience with Looking Glass. Um, but I bet people who do come in with a list of booths that they want to see, this is wonderful, right? They just search for the vendors they're interested in and they go to their website and they buy the things they're interested in. Yeah, let's have a quick look on how to run events, by the way.
to how to run events. So if you wanted to do, do just like a little pickup game, you would go, um, you would find your game. So for example, if you have Tabletopia, hey, cool. Um, you could search for your game. Okay, so say we wanted to play Shipwreck Arcana. You have to create an account. If you're the person running events, you do need to have a premium account. For Gen Con this year, they had a code that you could put in that would give you like, like seven or 14 days of a free account uh, version of a premium account. Only the person running the event would need to have the premium account. The players only need to have like a basic account. So you would hit like play online and it generates a room for you. Great, you're ready. There's a seat, uh, there's a host, blah, blah, blah. Um, you add seats for the number of players you want to have. Um, and then you copy and paste the link up here. So you copy it. Then you would go to Discord into the Open Gaming FAQ. And make sure you read all of it because it's all valuable. It's not very long as you can see. But the first thing it tells you to do is to go into Open Gaming Roles. If you want to play a game, you hit um, exclamation mark player. If you want to run a game, you hit exclamation mark GM. And if you're done with a game, you hit exclamation mark end game, which is great. Once you've done that, it, it kind of changes the permissions. There's a bot, it changes the permissions that you have. You would post in gaming hall looking for game LFG. And uh, you just kind of scroll around there. You would post, um, hey, I'm looking for a game. Uh, uh, hey, I'm, I want to run Shipwreck Akana. Uh, hey, I want to run Shipwreck Akana. It goes for up to five players, so four more spots. I want uh, to use voice chat for it. It's on Tabletopia. Uh, beginners, welcome if you're willing to teach how to, how to play and maybe tell them how long it would take to play either with teaching or um, with how much experience they already have. Once you start getting some interest, people might have some questions for you, you answer them. But once they're like, yeah, let's play, you will tell them that, cool, in that case, we're gonna go hang out on table two. Um, go meet me in there. And then also make sure that they're using uh, the voice channel versions of that too. So if you just go to tab the table version, it's just text-based. If you go to the voice chat, you enter the voice chat version of that table. Once you're there, you send them the link that we copied over from Tabletopia. And then, that's it. You would, um, they would enter the link and be taken to pretty much this page and they would take a seat and ready themselves. And when you're all ready, you can hit start game and then you go ahead and play it. It was a little clunky to play it. So again, as I said, the particular game we chose to play was very clunky and not not perfectly built for Tabletopia. I bet that they've figured out how to run it in the right way, except that they don't give you like a tutorial on how different things work. So we kind of struggled through it, but it was so easy. So I highly recommend um, running games, running, you know, make sure your favorite game exists and then just run it. It's great. I had a fun time. It was super easy. And that's it. I'm going to edit this video since nothing else is happening tonight. I'm going to edit this video. It's 10 p.m. So hopefully I'll be in bed by midnight. Um, and I'll see you guys tomorrow. We'll see what fun, fun things we've got on the very last day of Drink on online. Good night, everybody. Bye-bye.